We are going to enter a time of prayer on what we heard during the revival. During the revival, which is the first day, we heard that your purpose is always in the mind of God. Your purpose is always in the mind of God. And that is what John chapter 18, 36 to 38 says. Always God has a purpose. Hallelujah. We are praying. We are in a prayer mode. So God has a purpose. And also, God created anything and everything for his pleasure. So God created you for his pleasure. That is what we are made to know. And so, your Christianity should be that we bring pleasure to God. So I want you to pray this time. That, Lord, let my life, the summary of my life, bring pleasure to you. This is a very serious prayer. And then he went on to tell us that the living word of God is God himself. And more importantly, when we are praising God, when we are adoring God, God amplifies his, our voice in his presence. So as you are going to pray, remember your prayers is like an incense, a fragrance offering unto him. So we are going to pray that Lord, say it after me, Lord God. Lord God. Let my life, the purpose of my life, which is always in your mind, achieve fruitfulness on this earth in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Jesus' name. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that the purpose of my life, the purpose of your life, will achieve the fruitfulness that God has ordained on this earth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. 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 Mighty and everlasting God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. And then secondly, we were meant to know that there are three types of people in the world. The first group hears the word of God like Pharaoh, and he will say, who is this God? Then those who hear the Lord and do not hear him, and so we were meant to know that those people's ears may be open. They are in the church. They are in the church. They hear the message every day. But their ears is not open to understand the word. And then tell people, those who hear, but don't do anything. And that is why even a prophet of God was sent to go to Judah, Israel, to prophesy. He got there. He didn't do what God told him to do. Even pastors are not doing what God told them to do. Let us know the congregation. So we are going to pray against every stumbling blocks that is fighting against the church, including you and I, so that we are not able to take the necessary steps whenever we hear the word of God, so that you do bring blessing to us. We are going to pray. Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
any kind of stumbling block. It could be doubt. It could be compromises. Oh, yes. Take authority. Prophesy that your life will be alive. That you always hear the voice of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Say amen. amen. Isaiah also informs us that when we meet like this and we pray and fast, God says he uses our prayer and fast to build, to rebuild the old rooms in our family. The old rooms. The bad things in our family. God says when we are fasting and waiting upon him and interceding for his church, he uses our prayer and fasting to destroy everything that is not good and then build the old rooms up and so we are going to pray in the name of jesus that this prayer of yours will enter into your family and whatever has gone amiss it will build it in jesus name begin to pray yes yes lord in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord, they must have Yes, Lord. Yes, your family, your father's family, your mother's family, the church, this church, pray that your prayer and fasting will build, will rebuild, will rebuild, will rebuild, will rebuild, will rebuild, will rebuild. In the name of Jesus, say amen. Beloved. Yes, God put on the heart of Nehemiah to build a physical wall. So the question is, in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12, follow, he says, God put the rebuilding of the wall on his heart. But he, he not only built a physical wall, but at the same time, he was also building a spiritual wall. But the Bible tells us that Nehemiah did it in partnership with God and also in partnership with the people who help him to build the wall. Do you are in partnership with God, but who are the people are you in partnership with? And that is why you are suffering. You are doing it alone. Who are you in partnership? Who are the people around you to help you build your life? That is the challenge. He call it the mystery of the power of obedience. You are in partnership with God. But what about the people? You are going to pray and prophesy that God will bring the right people in your life. Hallelujah. To help you build your life. To help you build your family. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I want to in the name of Jesus, 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 yes, Lord, in Jesus, says, oh, beloved, what has God put in your heart concerning the church to build? And so that is the challenge. At the end of the first day, he says, what has God put in your heart like Nehemiah to build? So you are going to tell the Lord, my eyes is open during this revival. And therefore, this is what I realize you have put in my heart to build. And therefore, give me the right people. Give me the wisdom. Give me the understanding. Give me the strength. Lord, the talent and the gift, revive it in me. 
so that I'll be able to do my part in your kingdom. Begin to pray. In Jesus' name, say amen.